Thank you very much. Headlines from Jerome Powell's speech at the Brookings Studio saying there's a long way to go to restore price stability. He anticipates ongoing rate increases. However, he says the full effects of the rapid tightening the Fed has undertaken have yet to be felt. And so it makes sense, he says, to moderate the pace of rate increases. Moderating that pace could come as soon as December. But before you think the Fed chair is getting too dovish, he goes on to say rates have to rise to a sufficiently restrictive level. That's a phrase the Federal Reserve has used quite a bit. And he's uncertain about what that rate will be. But in any event, the ultimate level is probably higher than the 4.6 percent projected in the September summary of economic projections from the Fed. The Fed is likely to hold policy at a restrictive rate, quote, for some time. History, he says, cautions strongly against prematurely loosening policy. Quote, we have more ground to cover. Another quote, we will stay the course till the job is done. Getting into the nitty gritty, what you'll see in the rest of this speech is if he opens a little window for the doves to come in, he quickly closes it. October inflation, he says, is a welcome surprise to the downside. But hold on, because he says down months in inflation are, have often in the recent past been followed by renewed increases in inflation. And here's a new metric for the Fed chair. He says we need, quote, substantially more evidence to give comfort that inflation is indeed declining, and he has not seen clear progress yet on slowing inflation. The path ahead for inflation, he says, remains highly uncertain. He is skeptical about private sector forecasts that, have sh that show inflation set to decline next year. He goes into detail on inflation. Goods price inflation should exert downward pressure, he says, on inflation in coming months. However, housing inflation will continue well into next year when he expects it will begin Steve. to fall. They're, they're, Steve, you're giving yes. me the hook, my man, because we're going to go hear from the man himself. As markets turn around a bit, here's Jay Powell. In particular, without price stability, we will not achieve a sustained period of strong labor market conditions that benefit all. We currently estimate that 12-month PCE inflation through October ran at 6.0%. While the October inflation data received so far showed a welcome surprise to the downside, these are a single month's data, which followed upside surprises over the previous two months. As figure one makes clear, down months in the data have often been followed by renewed increases. It will take substantially more evidence to give comfort that inflation is actually declining, and by any standard, inflation remains far too high. For purposes of this discussion, I'll focus my comments on core PCE inflation, which omits the food and energy inflation components, which have been lower recently but uh, can be quite volatile. Our inflation goal is for total inflation, of course, as food and energy prices matter a great deal for household budgets. But core inflation often gives a more accurate indicator of where overall inflation is heading. 12-month core, core PCE inflation stands at 5.0 percent in our October estimate approximately where it stood last December when policy tightening was in its early stages. Over 2022, core inflation rose a few tenths above 5 percent, and it fell a few tenths below, but mainly it moved sideways. So when will inflation come down? I could answer this question by pointing to the inflation forecasts of private forecasters or of FOMC participants, which broadly show a significant decline over the next year. But forecasts have, predict, have, forecasts have been predicting just such a decline for more than a year, while inflation has moved stubbornly sideways. The truth is that the path ahead for inflation remains highly uncertain. For now, let's put aside the forecasts and look instead to the macroeconomic conditions we think we need to see to bring inflation down to 2 percent over time. For starters, we need to raise interest rates to a level that is sufficiently restrictive to return inflation to 2 percent. There is considerable uncertainty about what rate will be sufficient, although there's no doubt that we've made substantial progress, raising our target range for the federal funds rate by 375 basis points since March. As our last post-meeting statement indicates, we anticipate that ongoing increases will be appropriate. It seems to me likely that the ultimate level of rates will need to be somewhat higher than thought at the time of the September meeting and the summary of economic projections. I will return to policy at the end of my comments, but for now I'll simply say that we have more ground to cover.